Welcome back to Jesus the Conqueror, a devotional series designed to build hope and faith. My name is Roger Schmidt, and I'm glad you joined me. I hope you subscribe and share this video. Uh, you know our theme text, Revelation 6-2. A crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. Last time I introduced uh, a new segment here. We're going to look at Jesus the Conqueror and see how he secured uh, our victory. And we're going to do this in three parts. Um, we see that Jesus sustains our present life. Uh, Jesus uh, uh, squares, that is, our past life, and he secures our future life. So I want to start with the, well, let's start with our past life. Jesus squares our past life. And um, he does this by, uh, through victory over our sin. Now, um, let me tell you about a time in my life I had a legal problem. Um, I was a young man. I had just graduated from high school. It was 1986. I was preparing uh, to move up to Chattanooga to attend my first year of college. And, um, you know, it was, a, it was a lot of work. I had to, uh, to work to earn as much money as possible. I was working every shift I could get, saving every penny because I had to come up with a pretty good entrance fee. I had to pay off my, uh, my, my high school um, school tuition and um, of course my parents were helping with that I was having to put together all the you know all of the um, uh, you know the financial uh, obligations that had to take place before I could get up to school take care of you know get some student loans all of that all of that stuff and uh, very exciting but also you know a lot of um, a lot of work and a lot of stress I suppose well I made it even worse uh, because uh, in that very last week just before I was ready to head up to Chattanooga, um, I'd already given my two weeks notice, and um, I was already packed for, for, for that matter, but I was going into work, and I thought I would take a little shortcut uh, into work. There was, uh, between two roads I needed to be on, there was this little side road that connected them. It was only about a quarter mile long, and I thought, well, I'll take that little road. I know that road, and that will save me just a few minutes, bypass a couple of traffic lights and whatever. Well, uh, the problem was, is I was going down this little quarter mile side road, a police officer, officer stepped down into the road. He was a motorcycle officer, and um, he had me on his radar uh, speeding. And so he steps out there and, and waves me over to the side. And, oh, I was, uh, I was uh, not happy. Uh, he had me going uh, 35 miles an hour, which doesn't sound very fast. It's not very fast. In fact, it's very slow. The problem was I was in a 15-mile-an-hour zone. So this was you know, this was going to be a big ticket. This was going to be a hefty fine. Even though I was only going 35, I was going well over the speed limit, or more than double. And uh, I knew I was going to be in some trouble. And sure enough, um, this, this ticket was going to end up being, you know, $85, $87, something like that, which was a big ticket in 1986. Now, it probably wouldn't be that big a deal. But in those days, that was a, that was a heavy ticket. And especially to someone like me who had no money to spare. I could not afford to pay for that ticket. So what did I do? Well, I did what many young men <laughs> probably do. I ignored it, right? Well, sort of. I, I put it off. I says, well, I'll deal with this later. I don't have the money now anyway. I'll get up to Chattanooga. I'll get a job. I'll deal with it later. Well, I did put it out of my mind. kind of forgot about it got up to, to Chattanooga, and um, what I did was I went out and got, immediately got a Tennessee driver's license, and maybe, uh, you know, in the back of my mind, I thought, well, that's that. I solved that problem. What are they going to do, right? Well, it's a bit naive, I suppose, and um, I knew at some point I would have to deal with it, but it was easy to put out of my mind because I was up in Tennessee, but here's the problem. Every time I drove down to Florida to visit family, to go on you know, Christmas breaks, down there for the summer, whatever. Every time I would cross that Florida line, suddenly the anxiety would come. All right, I would remember that ticket, and um, and I just knew any second I was going to get pulled over and handcuffed or whatever. You know, your imagination gets carried away. But I still didn't deal with it. I, I still put it off. Now, well, one of these days I got to get that solved. So I put it off. Not just a few months, but a few years, many years. In fact, it was into my married life before I finally was forced to deal with it. My wife and I moved to uh, North Carolina to take a new job, and, and I tried to get a driver's license there. And by that time, all the states were kind of working together with their computer systems and, and et cetera. And 
I couldn't put it off any longer. If I wanted to get a, you know, a new driver's license, I had to deal with my past life. So I had to plan a trip down to Florida, went to, um, went to the, the right, you know, um, office there to get it dealt with. And of course, in my mind, I thought as soon as I walked through the, uh, the, uh, the doors there, there's going to be a SWAT team to jump on me or whatever. But of course, you know, I knew that wasn't the case. And that wasn't the case. It really turned out to be no big deal. I was shocked. Um, all I had to do after so many years was pay a processing fee. It was less than $25. So in my mind, I'd built this up that, you know, it's going to be this huge fine or maybe even a suspended license or whatever. And it ended up being really no big deal at all. I was I was stress free. I was able to go in peace and, and, and all that anxiety was now put behind me. My legal problem had been solved. Well, I tell you that because um, according to the Bible, every one of us has a legal problem. Paul teaches in Romans 3 that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And John, he states clearly in 1 John chapter 3 that sin is lawlessness. So we're guilty of sin, all of us. We're guilty of lawlessness. And not just as individuals, but as members of the human family. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, each one of us uh, is born into a failed and rebellious human family. Because of the sin of Adam and Eve, everyone born into their family from that point on is born into a world that's already been marked by sin. In other words, we're all born into a sinful condition. And this is so important to understand, and, and too many misunderstand this. You see, you're not a sinner because you sin. You sin because you are a sinner. And it's important to understand that. You sin because you're a sinner. You were born into a sinful condition. Now, some people struggle with that a little bit, but, but think of, a, of, an, of an example here. Think of a Bible story. Think of little baby Moses. Most of us know the story of Moses, right? Um, when little baby Moses was born, he was born a slave. From the moment he drew his first breath, he was a slave. Why? Because his parents were slaves. His parents were Hebrew slaves in Egypt. And the moment he was born, he also was a slave. Now notice, he had not yet done the work of a slave. He he'd never labored as a slave. And he didn't look like a slave. He had never done anything that would make him a slave. He was a slave simply because he was born into a condition of slavery. And we need to recognize that we're the same way. We are born into a condition of slavery. Now, don't get me wrong, okay? I may have been born into a condition of, of slavery and sin, right? Uh, and I had no choice in that. But since that time, I've had plenty of uh, choices of my own. I mean, I've been plenty. I've been guilty of plenty of, of my own sin and my own rebellion, right? Uh, and that's why we need Christ the Conqueror. We all do. In Ephesians chapter one, verse seven, listen to what Paul says. In Him, he writes, we have redemption through His blood. Now he's talking about Jesus here. In Jesus, we have redemption through His blood. The forgiveness of uh, our trespasses according to the riches of His grace. You see, Jesus died a sinner's death even though He was innocent. His human death secured a human victory over sin, making it possible to square our past life. You see, we may have been born into a sinful human family in Adam, but because of Jesus' death, we can be adopted into a new human family in Jesus. Here's what it says in Colossians. This is Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. Talking about the Father now, he says, He has delivered us, He, the Father, has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of His beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. You see, Jesus squared our past life 
so that we can be transferred into a new life. He dealt with those past sins. He provided a way for them to be forgiven. And that makes all the difference. Uh, there's a story in, uh, in Luke that I love. Luke chapter 7, there's a story of a woman who comes in to, uh, to a place where Jesus is surrounded by a lot of important people. He's actually the guest of honor at a, at a party. And uh, this woman, who's a known sinner, comes in and, and she begins to put you know, um, perfume on Jesus' feet. She begins to anoint him and, and kiss his feet and, and dry his feet with her hair. And it's quite a, you know, it's quite a scene. And, and everybody uh, in the room, of course, comes to a stop and watches this woman. And the men begin to criticize her for that. And Jesus rebukes them for criticizing uh, her. And this is what he says. This is Luke chapter 7, verse 47. Therefore, I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is given, the same loves little. Then he said to her, your sins are forgiven. And those who sat at the table with him began to say to themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? Then he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Now listen, Jesus offered this woman forgiveness, and the result is peace. So think about that. There's no reason to go for years filled with guilt and anxiety over our past life. It's not necessary. Jesus has squared our past life. Through faith, you can go in peace because Jesus has secured your victory. Praise God for his son Jesus, the conqueror.